Mofan, a teenage boy who struggles not only with typical school bullies but also with mastering magic. Enter Mofan, a kid who, despite his best efforts, seems to attract trouble like a magnet. He's got a stubborn streak, a father who believes in him a little too much, and a knack for turning every magical encounter into a spectacle. This is the story of Mofan, the underdog who gets god abilities but decides to hide it. Mofan, a ninth grader taking his senior board exams, felt confused since he didn't study for his exams, not that he could study since the test was about magic. As the bell rang, signaling the end of the exam, students began leaving the building. Walking out, Mo Fan remembered how everything changed three months ago when he fell asleep with a strange pendant around his neck. Since then, all anyone talked about was magic. Other students behind him gossiped, thinking Mo Fan didn't understand the subject because he exited the building quickly. Mubai, one of the students, was excited about their senior school, where they would become mages after passing the entrance exam they just took. Coming from an ice-talented family, everyone assumed Mubai would have ice talent too. Mo Fan's father came to pick him up. Mo was disappointed since he had only three months to prepare for an exam covering nine years of material. His father told him about a driving job he found for Mo in a neighboring city with his uncle Guanfeng. However, Mo wanted to become a mage. His father tried to persuade him to start working early since Mo's performance wasn't enough to meet the entrance requirements. Determined, Mo convinced his father to let him try. As Mo and his friend walked home, they saw Mo's father begging Mr. Mu to get Mo admitted to the senior magic school. Mr. Mu was stubborn because Mo once tried to elope with the Mu family's heiress. Despite his father's loyalty, Mr. Mu called Mo a failure and said if he wanted to be a mage, he should study hard. Mo's father offered to do anything to get Mo admitted. Seizing the opportunity, Mr. Mu demanded Mo Jiaxing's house. With no other option, Mo Jiaxing agreed. Watching from a distance, Mo thought the world was cruel to the poor. At home, Jiaxing told Mo he got him admitted to the magic school. lying about a friend being the director. He also lied about renting the house since Mo would live at school, and he would be driving. Jiaxing mentioned Miss Mu's return and Mo promised to study hard and become the greatest mage ever. He recalled the time he tried to elope with Mu Ningxu and was beaten by the Mu family. The school starts with a magic awakening ceremony that day. In class, Mo's pendant began to shine. However, a bully began taunting him, thinking he wouldn't even awaken the weakest of all the element. The ceremony began with Mu Bai's ice awakening, showing his talent with an ice logo and one star on his badge, indicating strength. Ice is considered pretty strong in this world. As Mu Bai taunted Mo Fan, calling him a loser, it was now Mo's turn as the class buzzed with boredom. Mo Fan walked to the crystal, and suddenly a bright purple light shone outside. Everyone rushed to see who awakened the powerful thunder element, leaving Mo alone in the class to awaken. As the class rushed outside to witness the awakening of the rare thunder element, which occurs only once in every 10,000 people, Mo Fan continued his awakening alone in the classroom. Suddenly, he felt heat in his palm and saw the crystal ball in front of him change from purple to red, indicating the fire element. Mo realized he had awakened both thunder and fire elements simultaneously. When the students returned, they were astonished to see Mo had awakened the fire element. No one could believe a loser like Mo could have such a talent. Only two students had awakened the fire element, and Mo was one of them, making Mu Bai grit his teeth in anger. Mo, feeling overconfident, imagined what others would have said if they had seen the purple lightning alongside the fire element. He began to see himself as a genius, planning to reveal his thunder element when the time was right. However, realistically, the only thing he's a genius at is nothing. Two months later, the teacher was instructing the class about Stardust and the spiritual world, explaining how to use magic release. Full concentration was required for magic release, otherwise, one had to start over. The teacher called Mubai to demonstrate. Mubai could control five stars, and it took controlling all seven stars to use magic release. The fat bully seized every chance to taunt Mo, claiming he would flunk by the end of the year. Mo could only control one fire star but six thunder stars. One day, Mo saw Zinxia being bullied in the park. Determined to help, he approached the bullies, summoning six thunder stars and knocking out the main bully. The other bullies fled, and Zinxia, Mo's disabled sister, was amazed by his magic. Mr. Mu laughed when Mu Bai reported that Mo was at the bottom of the class, predicting his eventual expulsion. Mo, reflecting on his father's sacrifices, tried to concentrate on his fire stars. During a bath, his water suddenly boiled, causing him to jump out. Zinxia brought Mo a cake and asked how he mastered the Wrath of Thunder in less than six months. She suspected he had sought help from the Black Curia, a cult that accelerates skill improvement. Mo denied it and asked her to keep his secret. He worried that others might think he had used the Black Curia's help, which could get him in trouble, so he decided to focus on his fire element. The next day, in class, Mo noticed all the students drooling as he turned around to see a beautiful, mature woman behind him. 
the teacher introduced herself as Miss Tang, their new practical magic teacher. Ah! It should have been me, not him! It's not fair! She asked the students with the fire element to stamp. Only three stood, including Mo, who was continually taunted by the fat bully. Miss Tang demonstrated her powers, shocking everyone with a level 1 fire spell, Fire Burst, one of the weakest, strongest fire spells. Mr. Mu was advising Mu Bai to work harder to impress Miss Mu during the end of year exams. Mu Bai was discussing with his uncle, Mr. Mu, about their plan to force Mo Fan to quit school. Mu Bai doubted Mo's incompetence, thinking he was just a weak student who scored a D on the entrance exam. However, Mr. Mu had other plans. He showed Mu Bai a black magic stone that could absorb the light of the crystal ball. This stone would ensure Mo Fan did poorly in the exams. Mr. Mu still held a grudge against Mo Fan for eloping with Mu Ningsu. The examiner, who worked for Mr. Mu, would place the stone in the crystal ball when it was Mo's turn. Mo Fan was struggling to control the stars and practice magic. His powers were fading, and he could now only control five stars. With less than a month left until the final exam, which would test basic magical abilities, Mo felt the pressure. He knew he had a better chance of impressing the Mu family if he could harness more power. Determined, Mo stood up to practice again but collapsed, gasping for breath. He doubted his strength. The next day, the teacher explained the crystal bell, a magic stone that measures magical power. The brighter the crystal glows, the more powerful the candidate. Grades would be based on this brightness. Mu Bai asked if magic release was important this year. The teacher replied that it wasn't essential, but any student capable of performing it would be moved to the elite class and receive a star bracelet to help them progress faster. Mu Bai coveted the star bracelet. On the exam day, the students gathered on the exam grounds as the head of the Mu family addressed them. Mu Ningsu, also present, was the center of attention due to her talent and early admission to the Imperial College at 15. Mu Bai planned to embarrass Mo Fan in front of her. The professor called Mu Ningsu to showcase her powers, and she broke the crystal with her strength. Zaya, who was next and received Anna from the crystal bell. He attempted magic release but failed, prompting laughter from the crowd. Miss Tang encouraged Zaya who despite his failure, Mu Bai achieved an S grade and attempted magic release, earning a B. All eyes were on Mo Fan as Mr. Mu's man hid the black magic stone under the crystal. The stone absorbed Mo Fan's magic, causing everyone to laugh at him. Mr. Mu criticized him harshly. When Mo Fan tried again, the crystal broke, and he received a B, prompting more taunts. Miss Tang proposed retesting Mo Fan's abilities, suspecting a faulty crystal ball. Despite objections, a new crystal ball was brought in. To everyone's shock, Mo Fan's abilities were graded S, even brighter than Mu Bai's. Mo Fan decided to attempt magic release, furious, Mu Bai watched as Mo Fan's true talent was revealed. The students were stunned when Mo Fan used his magic release to burn down the wooden target. The professor graded him with an A, shocking everyone, as it showed Mo was better than Mu Bai and the rest. The headmaster, impressed by Mo's talent, asked Mr. Mu if Mo was part of the Mu family. Mr. Mu, grudgingly, said Mo was just the son of their driver. This impressed the professor even more, seeing Mo's improvement without any family backing. Mu Ningsu's father, Mr. Mu Zhaoan, called Mo to commend him and offered him a star bracelet, asking him to forget the past. Mr. Mu tried to interfere, suggesting the bracelet should go to Mu Bai. But Mu Zhaoan told Mu Bai to work harder for it. Mo's teacher told him to accept the bracelet and thank Mu Zhaoan. However, stubborn as ever, Mo called Zhaoan an old weirdo. Still holding grudges against the Mu family for how they treated him and his father, Mo declined the offer to join the Mu family, even if Zhaoan paid him or let him marry his daughter. Furious, Zhaoan was about to release his magic when the principal intervened, telling him to control himself. The principal also asked Mo to apologize for disrespecting an elder. But Mo, being Mo, insisted that the one who needed to apologize was Zhaoan for breaking into his house and injuring his father, who still suffers from the injuries. Zhaoan called Mo and his father scum, saying they didn't deserve his apologies. Mr. Wu stepped in, trying to provoke the principal to expel Mo, but the principal wasn't in the mood to be ordered around. Mu Bai challenged Mo to a duel to earn points in Zhaoan's eyes. The principal advised Mo to apologize, but Mo, ever the stubborn one, gladly accepted the duel. If Mo lost, he would kneel and apologize to Zhaoan. But if he won, Zhaoan would apologize to his father. Miss Tang jumped in, reminding them that the Mage Association forbids duels between underage mages. If they wanted a duel, they would have to wait two years. Zhaoan accepted the challenge and said his son, Yuang, would fight Mo in those two years. As Zhaoan left, Zaya who told Mo that Yuang was much more powerful than Mu Bai. Mo realized he needed to work harder, knowing Zhaoan wouldn't forget the disrespect. 
The elite class began with Mo Fan at the top and Mu Bai second. Miss Tang continued teaching practical magic. She explained that each student would get a star bracelet for a month of practice, but Mo, who disrespected Zhao Un, would only get it for 10 days. Damaging the bracelet would result in expulsion and a ban from becoming a mage and Mo wondered if his rapid progress was due to his loach pendant. On the training ground, Mo worked hard with his magic release. Mu Bai believed he would get stronger using the star bracelet more than Mo. Mo asked if Yuang was also using a star bracelet, to which Mu Bai replied that thanks to Mo, Yuang got to use it for six months straight. Mo was shocked to learn there were levels in star bracelets. He continued practicing after learning about his opponent. One night, as Mo was on the roof, his pendant moved towards the bracelet and suddenly ate it, shocking Mo. Miss Tang appeared, asking if he lost the bracelet. She told Mo to be honest and offered to help. Mo explained everything. Miss Tang, seeing his pendant, told Mo it was also magical gear that needed to be fed to progress. Mo realized his rapid skill improvement was due to the pendant. Miss Tang said she would take care of the bracelet but that he owed her, disappearing, leaving Mo confused. The elite class went on a field trip to a safe zone outside the city where monsters couldn't reach. Upon arrival, Chief Instructor Jian Kong addressed them and announced a bounty hunting mission. Whoever completed the mission would get another students hesitated, feeling like beginners, but Jan Kong taunted them, questioning if the elite class was full of cowards. Mo asked about the prize, and Kong said it was a magical armor he would personally gift to the winner. Motivated, the students prepared for the mission, but Mo was especially determined, knowing he needed the armor to stand a chance against his wealthy opponent from the Mu family. A group of students was climbing a mountain when they reached the top and realized they needed a bridge to cross to the other side. Everyone looked at Zinhu, a wind user, and asked him to jump to the other side and use his wind powers to create a bridge. Meanwhile, Mu Bei was leading another group of students through the valley. Both teams reached their designated location, right outside the cave of the one-eyed demon wolves. Instructor Kong had told them about this cave, which his unit cleared a month ago. The students needed to check if any wolves were left and retrieve Instructor Bai Yang's lost bracelet. Some students were scared to step in, while others were confident in their powers. Back at the base, Instructor Kong and Miss Tang were informed about the students' location and their performances. Kong mentioned to Miss Tang and another teacher that there was something important for the students in the cave. Miss Tang agreed but worried about Mo Fan, who had been relying on a pendant and might struggle with real danger. A fat bully kept exaggerating how Mu Bei would save everyone if there was trouble. The students reached the cave entrance using ropes. As they were entering, Mo Fan noticed something strange about a pond outside the cave. He thought it should be full from recent rain, but it was half empty. He suspected something big had drunk from it. Zaya who didn't catch Mo's hints at first, but Mo explained that only something very large could drink so much water at once. Zaya who ran to warn the others, but Mu Bei and the fat bully laughed and ignored him, continuing their mission. Suddenly, the teams encountered a huge one-eyed wolf demon and panicked. Mu Bei tried to use magic but failed and started running away in fear. Ju Min wanted to use magic, but Mo Fan carried her to safety because casting magic takes time. Kong was watching, and he recognized the Arch Wolf as one of his men's creations. Mu Bei used all his strength but couldn't hurt the Arch Wolf. Zhu Min rushed back to attack the wolf, transforming into her magical outfit, and attacking. The monster was unaffected and charged towards her. Jiaoting jumped in, using his thunder element to paralyze the wolf, but it wasn't strong enough to knock it out. The Arch Wolf got up and ran back to the cave. Mo Fan transformed into his magical outfit and used a level 2 fire spell, finally damaging the wolf. Zhu Kong and Miss Tang were impressed by Mo Fan's spell and told Bai Yang to call off the wolf, but the wolf wasn't responding to his commands anymore. The Arch Wolf was now out of control, forcing Zhu Kong to jump in to save the students. Instructor Kong stood ready with his wings spread out as the Arch Wolf closed in on a terrified female student. Just as the wolf was about to attack her, Saya who leapt in, using her wind magic to save the girl. Most of the students were hiding behind rocks, but Zaya who distracted the wolf, causing it to chase her. As the wolf pursued Zaya who, it ran into Mo, launching an attack on him. The strongest students, Zhao Tang, Mu Bei, and Zhu Min, were already down. Only Zaya who and Mo were still standing. They lured the wolf deeper into the cave to allow the other students to escape. The students outside the cave argued about whether they should go in to help Mo and Zayahu. At that moment, Instructor Kong appeared in the sky, flapping his wings. The students quickly informed him about the situation and the wolf's location. The arch wolf chased Mo and Zayahu until they reached a dead end. The wolf attacked Mo, but Zayahu took the hit. Mo then decided to use his thunder element to attack the wolf, but it didn't do much damage. In a desperate move, Mo attacked the ceiling, causing it to crumble and a large spike to fall, eliminating the wolf in moments. The spirit of the arch wolf was absorbed by Mo's pendant. Mo rushed to check on Zayahu, who was knocked down. 
he noticed Instructor Kong flying around the cave. Kong was about to launch an attack on the wolf when he realized it was already dead. Amazed, Kong couldn't believe a high school student had eliminated such a powerful beast. He started to examine how Mo managed to eliminate a wolf whose reflexes could dodge any falling stalactite. Mo interrupted and told him to check on Xiaohu, who needed help. Kong picked up Xiaohu and moved him to safety. Miss Tang and the other platoon members arrived in the cave, relieved to see the students alive and mostly unharmed. Bai Yong, furious at seeing his pet dead, started yelling at Instructor Kong, thinking he had eliminated it. Kong clarified that the wolf was already dead when he arrived and that Mo Fan was the one who eliminated it. This revelation shocked everyone, including Mo Fan's teacher, as the arch wolf could easily take down experienced mages. Miss Tang asked Mo to confirm if he had eliminated the wolf. Mo explained how he did it. Bai Yong wept over his dead pet. Instructor Kong told everyone to leave Bai Yong alone for now. The other students began talking about how Mo was the best in the academy, even better than Zhao Tang and Mu Bei. Miss Tang reminded the students that while this was a test, real monsters were far more dangerous than the arch wolf they just faced. Mo Fan received an S grade, while Mu Bei, Xiaohu, Zhao Deng, and Zhu Min got a grades for their efforts. Another instructor reminded Instructor Kong to reward Mo with the magic armor he had promised earlier. Although reluctant, Kong honored his promise and awarded Mo the magic armor. He also offered Mo a place in his unit after graduation. Instructor Tang was still thinking about how Mo might be hiding something about how he eliminated the arch wolf. Instructor Kong returned to the cave to inspect the area. He found scorch marks where the wolf was eliminated and burned marks on the wolf's body. Suddenly, a subordinate informed Kong that another wolf monster had been spotted in the area, which infuriated him. Kong ordered his unit to prepare their weapons, determined to eradicate the monster. Two months had passed, and Mo was relaxing on the roof of his dorm, meditating with his thunder stars and loach pendant. The pendant helped him progress 20% faster, allowing him to quickly level up from level 1 to level 2 magic release. Mo wondered how strong his thunder magic release would be at level 2 since it's the strongest element. He planned to level up his thunder element quickly by strengthening his loach pendant with a huge amount of energy. If it reached spirit level, he could progress 40% faster. Mo was also considering becoming a bounty hunter to engage in real combat and earn good money. Disguised as a masked man, Mo went to the bounty hunter's hall. There, he overheard two mages discussing lucrative tasks outside the safe zone, specifically in the North Valley, where one-eyed demon wolves were frequent. One task involved hunting an injured wolf that had escaped from the military, worth $300,000. Mo also heard them talking about monster hunter jobs that paid well and required less effort than bounty hunting. When one of the junior mages left, Mo approached the other mage, asking if monster hunters were recruiting. The mage pointed to a long line and told him not to waste his time since young mages didn't stand a chance against monsters. However, it was the perfect job for Mo since he couldn't leave the city because of school. The mage mentioned that teams preferred recruiting fire talents and would hire anyone with a thunder element without a second thought, even if they were inexperienced. Thunder element mages were highly sought after by wealthy individuals. Mo decided to head to the recruitment area. The leader of the monster hunters was quite cocky, thinking most people were a waste of time and that he was stronger than everyone else. Mo entered the room and lied about being a graduate to ease his hiring. He revealed that he was a thunder mage and demonstrated his talent, shocking everyone. The previous mage was also surprised. Suddenly, the captain rushed out of the room and recruited Mo Fan without hesitation, despite his flaws. The rest of the interviewees were sent home. One of the team members happened to be Ningxu's cousin from the Mu family, making Mo scared of revealing his identity. Mo was introduced to the whole team when suddenly an assistant informed them about an emergency at Epigraph Girls Junior High School, which was Zinxia's school. Mo tried to call Zinxia but couldn't reach her. The police were outside the school when Mo and his team arrived on the scene. They split up to search for the monster. Zinxia called Mo, informing him about something suspicious, but assuring him she was safe. While talking, Mo suddenly encountered the monster hiding behind a glass door. The monster launched an attack on Mo, who managed to dodge at the last second with his fast reflexes. The cafeteria was now covered in flames due to the monster's attack, triggering the fire alarm. The team heard the loud explosion and rushed towards the sound. The monster jumped at Mo again, but Mo dodged. Just as the monster was about to attack with its laser eye, the team arrived and blocked the laser with a water barrier. The monster, now surrounded, started shooting lasers wildly. 
The captain jumped in, using his fire magic to roast the monster, and it dropped in front of Mo. The team calmed down for a moment, but suddenly, the monster came back to life and attacked a team member. Mo quickly knocked down the monster again, saving his teammate. The team members were shocked to see the Cyclops monster moving so fast even on the brink of death. The captain was furious at one of the team members for letting her guard down, which had put Chai Tang's life at risk. Impressed by Mo's quick thinking and bravery, the captain made him a full-time member of the team. Mo was happy at heart, knowing he would receive a salary and bonuses. The monster's spirit was consumed by Mo's loach pendant, and he was surprised to see that no one else noticed it. The team continued their search for a missing girl and found a deep tunnel covered with Cyclops' footprints. They suspected the girl had been dragged through the tunnel by the Cyclops. The association took over the matter and the team headed back to their office. On the way back, the captain complimented Mo, acknowledging he was better than expected. When Mo returned to his dorm, he saw Zinxia near a telephone booth. She had heard the fight over the phone and thought Mo was injured. Mo calmed her down and told her about his first experience. The next day, Mo received his first paycheck and was overjoyed. At the Mu family house, Mr. Mu informed Yuang that his master wanted to see him. Yuang, who was swimming, came out of the pool, dissatisfied with his progress but still not considering Mo a worthy opponent. Mu Xiaowen told Yuang about his plans to celebrate Yuang's coming of age by inviting the upper class for dinner. While Mu Xiaowen didn't consider Mo a worthy opponent, he couldn't refuse the principal's request for a duel. Mu Xiaowen wanted Yuang to have the opportunity to participate in the Sacred Spring, where only one person was chosen to practice. The school wanted that opportunity, as did other families. Meanwhile, Mu Bei was talking to Mr. Mu about how the master favored Yuang. Mr. Mu also planned to steal the opportunity for the Sacred Spring and told Mu Bei to prepare for it. Mr. Mu was determined to ensure that Mo wouldn't win against Yuang. The next day, after class, Xin Hu asked Mo about his sudden habit of being late, and if Zhu Min had feelings for him. Just then, Zhu Min approached Mo and asked if he was free that night. Mo wondered if she liked him because he had saved her before. Zhu asked Mo to meet her at the back gate that night. Mo thought about how average couples meet at hotels, but it seemed strange that Min chose this place. Zhu told Mo about some suspicious tremors coming from an abandoned building nearby. People believed the place was haunted and Zhu wanted Mo's support to inspect it, but Mo sighed when he found out why Zhu approached him. They entered the building through a window, and while Mo was looking around, Zhu kicked the door open, giving Mo a mini heart attack. Mo took out revealing powder to trace monsters, surprising Zhu since it's only used by bounty hunters. The powder indicated the presence of monsters, shocking Zhu. Mo started analyzing the footprints and realized it was something other than a cyclops. The moon shone brightly, revealing a one-eyed demon fox feasting on flesh. Zhu panicked and insisted they escape, still traumatized by an encounter with an arch wolf. Mo told Zhu to evacuate and inform the authorities. Zhu, being smart, had already dialed 91. The dialing sound caught the demon fox's attention. Mo grabbed Ju and started running, taunting her for calling in front of a signal-sensing monster. The fox chased them. Mo tried a fire spell to shake it off, but it was a tough one. Mo told Ju to escape while he handled the fox. He stood in front of the fox, blocking its attack with a magic armor. Mo was out of breath. Monster hunters arrived on the scene. Ju had informed them about the monster and Mo's struggle. Mo had already sent a signal to his team, and Chai Tang, who was nearby, hurried to the location. Suddenly, Tang and Yuang appeared, using their creeping eyes to freeze the demon. Chai Tang recognized Mo Fan and told Yuang that this was the same kid who had disrespected their family. Tang yelled at Mo Fan to escape. Yuang laughed at Mo for escaping so quickly, despite his reputation at school. Chai Tang informed her captain and asked him to call Fan Mo immediately, as they needed his thunder power to sedate the fox. Mo changed his outfit and rushed back with a mask on. The rest of the team was also there. They ordered Mo to zap the fox with thunder as fire would melt the ice. The captain had contacted the association, and they were sending Zuo Yong. All they could do now was wait. Suddenly, the demon fox broke free from the ice and started evolving to warrior level. The monster was too strong for them. One team member suggested retreating until help arrived. But the captain felt responsible for the citizens relying on their safety. The demon wolf continued evolving into a thorn-faced wolf. The captain ordered the team to attack with combined force before the demon wolf could fully evolve into something beyond their ability. Rocky used earth magic to cause a tremor and prevent the wolf from escaping. The captain ordered Zyok to prepare her water defense quickly since the opponent was fast. The wolf's blood began boiling and melting the ice. The captain attacked the wolf with his most powerful fire spell, but the wolf got back on its feet and started attacking. Zyok managed to stop the wolf for a few moments, allowing Mo to carry her to safety behind a vehicle. The captain then used a level 2 cremation spell, 
but the wolf remained standing. Rocky used rock pillars, but they weren't enough, and the wolf destroyed Zyok's water wall. In the process of saving the captain, he got injured after being thrown by the wolf. Mo jumped in to launch a level 2 thunder spell, temporarily halting the wolf's evolution. Rocky and Chai Tang took the captain to safety, while the wolf started resisting Mo's magic. Everyone urged Mo to retreat, but he was too stubborn to leave. He wanted to see who would go down first. The team feared they would die there. They suggested retreating, but the captain prioritized the citizens' lives over his own. The captain joined Mo in attacking the monster. Suddenly, a huge wave of water washed away the demon wolf. Backup had arrived in the form of Zuo Yang, who used mid-level water magic, a tsunami, and a tornado to attack the demon wolf and the demon wolf is thrown to the ground. As the monster died, Mo walked towards it and absorbed the wolf demon's spirit with his pendant. After absorbing the spirit, Mo walked with Yang, admiring his mid-level magic. Yang also admired Mo's efforts and thunder magic, telling him he would become a mid-level thunder mage and eventually surpass him. Chai Tang informed Yang about the frequent appearance of monsters, which was alarming. Yang decided not to alarm the situation to avoid causing panic among citizens. Instead, they should hire more people to patrol and investigate further. Yang told the captain he was impressed by their new member. Yang was shocked to hear they had just hired Mo Fan. Mo returned to his school and tried to sneak back into his room when suddenly Zhu Min appeared behind him and hugged him. Mo was confused yet didn't miss the opportunity to feel the softness of her embrace. Min thanked Mo for saving her grandmother. Later, Mo was checking if his pendant had evolved. Suddenly, it started shining, indicating a power-up. Mo Fan laughed, <laughs> thinking he could now level up to the third level and beat the cocky rivals. Mo gave some money to Zinxia to buy something for herself and teased her a bit. Zinxia told Mo that she had awakened a healing talent, which was surprising since beginners aren't usually able to surpass elements, but Zinxia was an exception. Mo was meditating under a tree while Zaya who rested beside him. They talked about how fast time flies. Mo had been busy with school and monster hunting, and he had grown a lot. Zaya who reminded him about his upcoming duel with the arrogant Yuang, which was approaching quickly. Mu Xiaowen had invited celebrities from all over town to watch the duel. Suddenly, Miss Tang appeared and informed Mo that the principal wished to see him. Before leaving, Mo asked Miss Tang if he could visit her place at night for help with his fire magic. Zaya who was shocked to see Mo talking to Miss Tang like that. When Mo met with the principal, he learned that Mu Xiaowen had invited celebrities from all over the city to make a statement. The principal revealed that Mu Xiaowen wanted to achieve three things, defeat Mo, make his son Yuang famous, and secure the opportunity for his son to train at the Sacred Spring. Mo remembered that the mutated wolf had absorbed the power of the Sacred Spring and almost evolved into a thorn-faced wolf. If Mo could train there, he might be able to progress to mid-level easily. The principal explained the history of the Sacred Spring, which was 1,000 years old. Its power was decreasing, and the city convention only allowed one top mage to train there. Yuang had already defeated others his age, so it was either Mo or Yuang who would train at the Sacred Spring. The teacher mentioned that Yuang had access to vast resources, magic weapons, and armor. Though they didn't have much faith in Mo, they hoped he could bring recognition to their school. At the Mu family's mansion, the waiters gossiped about how Mo would embarrass himself and his father. Mu Xiaowen had also invited Mo's father. He talked to his daughter about Yuang and Mo's duel and how he had raised Yuang alone. Mu Xiaowen wanted to humiliate Mo. Ningxu stood up and left the room for a stroll. That night, Mo watched the Mu family mansion from a hill when Ningxu appeared and sat beside him. Mo talked about the duel and how her father spared no effort in supporting Yuang. Ningxu explained that Yuang was adopted by her father when he was seven and followed every order without mercy. She feared Mo would lose and wanted him to avoid the duel. However, Mo wanted to avenge his father and regain his dignity, remembering the humiliation when Mu Xiaowan beat his father. The next day, Mo walked to the fighting area as luxury cars passed by. Mo's team was also invited as guests. Chai Tang was greeting Rocky and others when Mo arrived. Chai Tang didn't recognize Mo and started badmouthing him. Mo remembered that his team only recognized him as Fan Mo with thunder magic and ignored Chai Tang's words. Mo tried to speak gently, but Chai Tang wanted to get rid of him. Rocky and Zyok were suspicious that their team member and Mo Fan were the same person. Mo was eating when Instructor Kong appeared behind him. Kong wanted Mo to join the military and promised to take care of him. Mo preferred the city over the mountains and ignored the offer. He heard people talking about Yuang being the next leader of the family but focused on his food. His classmates arrived to cheer him up. The ceremony started with Mu Xiaowan addressing the guests. EP 12. The atmosphere was electric as the captain arrived outside the arena in his armored vehicle. Guests were gathering inside the seating area, eagerly anticipating the duel. Yuang entered the arena with a cocky look, flaunting at least three magical gears. Mu Xiaowan started the match with a small speech, deliberately omitting Mo's name. 
Mo Fan and Yuang shook hands, with Yuang threatening Mo that he would be bedridden for three months. Mo confidently retorted, telling Yuang to worry about himself. The duel began with Yuang's creeping ice level 2. Mo defended against the ice magic with a fire burst. Miss Tang, observing the match, knew that Mo was fearless. Mo attacked Yuang with cremation, which Yuang dodged using his magical shoes that enhanced his speed. Mo tried again, but Yuang kept dodging. Instructor Kong called it a cheap trick, noting that Mo had high magic accuracy, but Yuang's magical shoes allowed him to evade the attacks. Yuang taunted Mo's fire magic as pathetic, despite using his magical gears. He started freezing the arena with level 3 ice magic, impressing the guests. Mo struggled to defend against the ice attack, and his flame died suddenly. The principal urged Mu Xiaowan to stop the duel, fearing for Mo's life, but Mu Xiaowan, wanting to humiliate Mo, let it continue. Desperate, Mo focused on his stars and managed to align all seven, launching a level 3 fire burst at Yuang. The attack caused a huge explosion, leaving Yuang on his knees. Miss Tang was shocked at Mo mastering level 3 magic. The guests were amazed that someone like Mo could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a privileged family member. However, Yuang stood up unharmed, protected by his ice armor. Mu Xiaowan had underestimated Mo, thinking the armor unnecessary. The teacher confronted Mu Xiaowan for being unfair, allowing Yuang to use magical gears against an opponent with none. Miss Tang agreed that Mo could have won with the level 3 attack. Mu Xiaowan dismissed the allegations, claiming that background power is a privilege for the elite. Mo, out of breath, was advised by Instructor Kong to forfeit, as Yuang's magic armor was fireproof, making it seem impossible for Mo to win. Yuang mocked Mo for being the son of a poor driver, triggering memories of Mo's father's sacrifices. Determined to win, Mo decided to use his trump card, the Thunder Element. Mu Xiaowan was shocked beyond belief to see Mo wielding Thunder Magic. The guests were equally stunned, realizing Mo was a dual element mage. Rocky recognized Mo as their team member, Fan Mo. Mo began charging up his attack, with Yuang now scared to death. Mo unleashed a level 3 Thunder Dragon, which Yuang's ice shield couldn't withstand. The attack shattered Yuang's armor into pieces. Miss Tang was astounded by the penetrating power of Mo's attacks. Mo Fan stood tall, with both elements in each hand. The principal and others were in awe of this blessed child with two powerful elements, honed to such a level and Mo Fan declares himself the winner of this duel.